Mother Hola. Once upon a time, there lived a widow in a village. She had two daughters. The elder daughter was called Stella. Stella was very kind and hardworking. The younger daughter Bella was rude and lazy. But the woman loved her younger daughter more, for she was her own daughter. The elder one was her stepdaughter, so she would make Stella slog all day like a servant in the house. Stella, finish all this work. You are still to go out and spin yarn. Bella, come here, my dear. You must be hungry. Have something. Stella quickly finished all the housework and went out to spin yarn. Every day, the stepmother would send her near the village well to spin yarn, and Stella would spin until her fingers bled. A parrot lived next to the well. Stella would speak to him while spinning yarn. One day, while she was spinning, her fingers began to bleed, and the blood stained the spindle. She kept the spindle on the well to clean it, and began to draw water when the spindle fell into the well. No, the spindle has fallen into the well. What do I do? If Mother finds out, she will be furious. Stella tried very hard, but she could not get the spindle out. She ran home and said to her stepmother, "Mother, the spindle has fallen into the well. Why didn't you fall into the well instead of the spindle? Now where will I get another one from? Go and get it out of the well." Don't you return without the spindle. Got it? Crying to herself, Stella went back to the well. She had already tried all she could to get the spindle out of the well. So, not knowing what else she could possibly do, Stella herself jumped into the well. When she opened her eyes, she saw herself in a grassy field. The sun was shining brightly, and there were lovely flowers everywhere. Where am I? What a beautiful place this is! Hmm, what a fine fragrance! Stella walked ahead, and at a distance she saw a bakery. There were loaves of bread in the oven. The loaves were calling out. It was as if this was some kind of a magical land. Get us out! Get us out! Or else we shall burn! We have been baking for a long time. Someone get us out! Stella heard the loaves and removed them from the oven. Thank you. Stella went further and she saw an apple tree. The tree too was speaking. All my apples are ripe. Please, someone pluck them and eat them, or else they will all rot. Stella heard the tree speak. And she could not bear the pain of the tree. As soon as she started shaking the tree, the apples began to fall to the ground like rain. Stella kept shaking the tree till the last apple fell. Then she gathered all the apples to one side and went away. As she continued walking, she reached a hut where she saw an old woman. The woman had such horrendous teeth that Stella got scared. And as soon as she turned to run away from there, the old woman called out to her, "Don't be afraid of me, my child. If you look after my house well, you can stay here. I shall give you everything. In return, you simply have to ensure that each day when you make my bed." You cover it with feathers, just as the ground is covered with snow after snowfall. And yes, everyone calls me Mother Holle. Mother Holle spoke to her so lovingly that Stella agreed to stay with her. Stella looked after the house very well, and each day she would make Mother Holle's bed exactly as Mother Holle had asked her to. Mother Hala too loved Stella very much, and would give her lovely food to eat. Stella stayed there for some time, and then she started missing home. Mother Hala is so kind to me; she takes such good care of me. But I am missing home. Stella was very happy with Mother Hala, 
But now she thought it was time she went back home. So, one day, she said to Mother Hala, Mother Hala, I wish to go back home. I cannot stay here any longer. I am happy that you wish to go back home. You have worked very sincerely. I am very happy with you. I shall drop you to your home myself. Really? Thank you, Mother Hala. Mother Hala took Stella's hand and led her to a huge door made of gold. The door opened. The moment Stella crossed the threshold of the door, it began to rain gold over her, and before she knew it, she was dressed in gold from head to toe. <laughs> this is your reward for serving me with such love. And here, your spindle that you had dropped in the well. Stella could not help wondering whether all this was real or simply a dream. She had never got so much love from anyone in her entire life. She cried tears of joy. Then the door closed, and Stella saw that she was standing near the well outside her stepmother's home. As soon as he saw her, the parrot came and sat on Stella's shoulder and said to her, Here she is! Your daughter is pure as gold! She has returned! Arr! The parrot kept saying this over and over again. When Stella entered the house, her stepmother and Bella were shocked to see her, for she was laden with gold from head to toe. They happily asked her to come in. Stella, my dear, where did you go? I was so worried about you. And where did you get this from? Stella told them everything. On hearing her story, the stepmother's heart became wrought with greed. Wow, so much gold. If I send Bella too over there, I shall become very, very rich. Just like Stella, the stepmother sent Bella too for spinning yarn to the well. Bella pricked her own finger with a thorn so that it would bleed. She put the blood on the spindle and threw it into the well and then jumped into the well herself. Like Stella, her eyes too opened in a grassy field. She got up and walked ahead. She reached the bakery. The loaves of bread in the oven were shouting, Get us out! Get us out! Or else we shall burn! We have been baking for a long time. Someone get us out! Are you crazy? Why should I dirty my hands for you? Bella spoke thus and moved on. She then reached the apple tree. Oh, my apples are ripe. Please, someone pluck them and eat them or else they will all rot. Are you crazy? Why should I pluck them? What if an apple falls on my head? She spoke rudely to the tree too and simply moved on. Finally, she reached Mother Holla's home. She had heard of her horrendous teeth from Stella. So without getting scared, she herself asked Mother Holla for work. Mother Holla, I have heard you need someone to work for you. Please let me have the job. Mother Holla explained all the work to her and told her how she wanted feathers to be laid on her bed each day. On the first day, Bella obeyed Mother Holla, but then from the next day, she started stalling. On the third day, she did nothing. Eventually, she began sleeping the entire day, and she even ignored the instruction of scattering feathers on Mother Holla's bed. Seeing no feathers on her bed, Mother Holla was furious. She went to Bella and said to her, I think you must now go back home. Bella was elated to hear this. She thought she would now get gold. Mother Holla took her to the golden door. As soon as Bella crossed the threshold of the door, instead of gold, it rained muck on her. This is your reward for the kind of work you have done. The door closed and she returned home. 
The parrot saw her, and sitting on the well, he began calling out, Here she is! Your daughter is ugly as muck! She has returned! That is why it is said, even imitation needs brains. Like Stella, Bella did manage to reach Mother Holla's hut, but because of her laziness and her habit of stalling work, she brought home muck instead of gold. So, from this story, we learn that we must be sincere and honest in whatever we do.